Hello to all my brides and grooms, all my couples out there. Uh, this is Gene with Incredible DJs. I'm back with another episode of the Bridal Workshop. Now, the reason I do the Bridal Workshop is because I do realize for most of you, for a majority of you, this is your first time getting married. There are a few of you that are doing this for the second time, some of you the third time. I ain't judging you. I ain't mad. But what I'm saying is, I want to give you some inspiration. I want to give you some instructions. Once again, you haven't done this before. All right. So I want to I want to help you. I want to guide you. All right. So when it comes to the wedding party introductions, I want to paint a picture for you. You're probably out taking pictures. Your guests are enjoying cocktail hour. All right. Now it's time for them to be seated. So they're going to come from the cocktail hour area. They're going to go into the reception area. And guess what? They're going to be anticipating your introductions or what in the wedding industry we call the grand entrance. Now, they call it a grand entrance for a reason. OK, it's a grand entrance because you are being highlighted. Right. So the first piece of advice I would give all my couples out there is you want your grand entrance to have a lot of energy. All right, so think about a basketball game introductions or football game introductions. Now, your wedding is not a sporting event, obviously, right? But it is a celebration, right? So if you think about those sporting events and you see how those players are being introduced, not that you're going to necessarily be introduced in that way. You can if you want, right? Uh, but before they start the game, right, they want to start it off on a high note. Right. So yeah, the lights go down. Right. The spotlights come on. The announcer comes on and he's now introducing number 45. Right. So once again, you're not going to be introduced in that way uh, per se, but it is a grand entrance. And you have to understand when you're planning a wedding, you're planning a party, you're planning a celebration, an elegant celebration, an elegant party. But that's really what you're doing. So my first recommendation is you want to come in to some music that has a lot of energy. All right. Also, think about this. Who's going to be in your wedding party? Are your parents going to be in the wedding party? Is the ring bearer flower girl going to be in the wedding party? Uh, is your bridesmaids and groomsmen going to be in the wedding party? Are the ushers going to be in the wedding party? Who is going to be introduced during the grand entrance? Because just, mo just because mama and dad walked down the aisle for the ceremony doesn't necessarily mean that they want to be introduced during the grand entrance, right? So I would recommend having a conversation with your parents about that. When it comes to the ring bearer flower girl, uh, you know, it's cool for them to walk in during the ceremony, but coming in during the reception might be a little bit challenging for them. All right. I've done several, not to say that they, you can't do it. What I'm saying is it can be challenging, especially if they're young kids, if they're two or three years old, well, if they're two years old, I don't know couldn't, if they could take a walk. The two years old walk? I think they do. Anyway, I've just experienced some very, very interesting moments when it comes to introducing the ring bearer and flower girl. They walk into the reception area. The doors fly open. They have 150 eyes looking at them. They can get a little bit nervous, right? Now, let's talk about the music. We talked about you want to have music with high energy, but let's think about this, right? Is everybody going to walk into the same song? Right. So, you know, do you want your parents to walk into a separate song? And do you want the flower girl and the ring bearer to walk into a separate song? Do you want your wedding party to walk into a separate song? Do you and your husband or wife, do you guys want to walk into a separate song? These are some things that you want to think about. All right. Also, where is the wedding party going to be standing once they're introduced? So, you know, one of the biggest pet peeves I have at weddings is when people are kind of standing there looking around like, hmm, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to stay standing? Am I supposed to go to, go to my seat? Where is my seat? <laughs> right? So to avoid all of those problems, the one thing I do as a master of ceremonies is before I do the wedding party introductions, all right, I'm going to get everybody lined up. I'm going to go over everybody's name again so I pronounce their names correctly 
Now, this is not going to be the first time I'm doing it, right? I'm just going to review their names with them again. All right. So line everybody up, go over the names and I'm going to give them instructions. Very important. Right. So if you're not doing a head table, you're doing a sweetheart table. Right. So before I make the introductions, I need to make sure that everybody in the wedding party knows where they're going to be seated. It's very important. Uh, I also need to tell them where to stand, right? So if you are doing a head table, uh, are they going to go behind the head table? Are they going to sit down when they're being introduced? So this is something that your MC is supposed to be doing or your wedding planner or the venue coordinator is supposed to assist when it comes to getting everybody situated before the wedding party introduction. Now I will tell you, if, especially if you have a large wedding party, 10 people plus, it can be a little difficult and challenging to get everybody situated and organized and ready to go. All right, so I'm going to run out a quick scenario for you guys. Uh, wedding party of 10 people, you got the parents, uh, both sets of parents, that's four, that's 14 people. Uh, you got the flower girl, ring bearer, that's 16 people. You got the bride and the groom, that's 18 people. All right, so 18 people need to be introduced. So what I need to do, I need to line up the parents of the bride first, right? Confirm their names. I need to line up the parents of the groom, confirm their names. Get the ring bearer and flower, uh, flower girl situated, okay? And definitely give them instructions. All right, but I'm also going to want, I'm also going to want to know are their parents in the in in the reception area or their parents part of the wedding party that's important to know because if they get nervous i need to let mom and dad know hey you may need to come grab your little one you know if they get a little scared to come out uh then i have to go down the line with the bride the bridesmaids and the groomsmen right go over their names uh you know make sure everybody's lined up correctly and then i'm going to tell them everyone is going to stand in front of the head table everyone is going to stand in front of the sweetheart table all right. And after the bride and groom are introduced, I'm going to make an announcement and say the wedding party may now be seated. That's your cue to go sit down. See, so everybody is aware of what's happening before it happens. And then I'm going to remind the bride and the groom, hey, listen, we're going to be going straight into the first dance right after the introductions. So they know what's going on. So they don't go and try to sit down, they know. So you're gonna hand your bouquet or your flowers to your maid of honor or to your matron of honor, okay? We're gonna wait like, you know, a minute, 45 seconds, let everyone get situated. Then I'm gonna make an announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, please draw your attention to the dance floor as the new Mr. and Mrs. dance their first dance as husband and wife. So that's just an example of giving your wedding party uh, instructions when it comes to the grand entrance once again the grand entrance is the grand entrance it's your you know all your guests are anticipating they're they're, they're waiting can't wait for you to come in right so uh, make it memorable make it special most importantly be creative with it you know i always tell couples this listen don't feel as if you have to do things because that's how it's traditionally done at weddings all right and you can do i mean if you're a traditional type of person definitely uh but i always encourage couple listen this is your wedding it doesn't have to be anything traditional about it it's what you want to do all right and what's going to make your guests happy but most importantly what's going to make you happy always remember this at your your wedding is a big party it's what it is it's a celebration it's a wedding celebration. It's a party. It's an elegant party, though. Right? It's not a club party. Turn down for what party? Right? No, no, no. Right? It is a it is a celebration, but it's a classy celebration. So once again, this is Gene with Incredible DJs with the Bridal Workshop. I hope this information helps.